Coming up in this episode, I get the wood in the tub section, I get everything married together and lined up, and believe it or not, I finish the body and pull it off the frame. And I've still got a couple decisions to make, and one of which is the splash aprons. Do we work these old originals, or do we take a second look at the reproductions and, uh, hmm, maybe they aren't so bad. Hello, I'm Mark Clayton. I've had the pleasure of owning, restoring, and driving these magnificent classic cars for over 40 years now. Take a ride along with me as I embark on the adventure of acquiring and restoring these great cars. Well, I never throw anything away, especially old wood. We need every little bit of piece of information that we can get in order to turn this pile into what we need. The wood is close, but never right on the money. So any clues that we can draw off the old stuff, that's really valuable information. Here's the back brace for the spare tire. And you can see it was beat up pretty good. But I had those neat little uh, uh, flat pieces there that the carriage bolts go through to the bumper brackets is really handy. Well, you can see all of the work that this thing needs. Somebody did a lot of welding all in this area and I gotta clean all that up. Even though it doesn't show, still gotta make it right. This is the piece that goes up uh, by the front floorboard and it's a cross sill and thank God I had that piece. Where I started with all this is I had the original sill plates. I put those in there and I trimmed my new ones to fit and I thought that'd be a good place to start with the B pillar and fitting everything up. So once I had the cowl all mounted down to the sub rails, then I came along and I put the, the door sill on there just so that everything fits. And also, I gotta have these door sills on there before I mount the body on the frame. Otherwise, you can't get to the bottom side to tack up the nails in the bottom. But once I got this all fit, looking good, and actually they fit really good. These are high quality reproduction sill plates uh, that they're making for these Victorias. So I got that set. I've got to make sure that I've got enough clearance that the door and the upholstery on the door is gonna clear them and they're not gonna hit. And it also gave me a good clue as to where this B pillar is going to have to go. So once I got that all kind of settled in, then it was just a matter of making sure I was in the exact right spot. So I had a place to start with the tub section. You start out with this wet noodle and you, it's just so difficult to get the thing in a position so that you can start. So it's just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And what I had to end up doing, I mentioned earlier that my sills weren't the same on each side. And guess what? I had to go back and I had to trim and fit my sills so that they fit exactly right. That is the sill on the body to fit the wood. So that was a little bit of a bummer. But um, you gotta start somewhere. So what I did is I located this B pillar and I got the tub section wrapped around it. Okay, I'm thinking I'm in pretty good shape, but look at this. I'm too damn close. So now I'm kind of committed, but not fully committed. I gotta work this out. Another thing that I wanted to do and make sure was right before I got too far along is I need to get the running boards mounted onto the frame and I need to get the fenders lined up to the running boards. And uh, as we'll see a little bit later on, I had a little bit of a problem. Eventually, as I started to get the top wood and some of the body wood in the car, I could finally marry that piece over the driver's door back to the body. But again, back and forth, back and forth. So now at this stage, I'm kind of put together, but see this hump right up here? Well, I don't have the shape exactly right, and I'm a little bit low here where I welded it back on, but I have no top wood in it yet. So there's no body wood in it other than the B pillars and that little strip of top wood so I could tie uh, the side of it together. So I'm starting to get the wood put in the car. I will bore you forever. So this is where I got to the point of I just fitted every single piece of wood, painted behind it, and then... Um, painted each piece of wood also and then that way behind everything I'm not going to have rust. 
And when I paint the body, I'll go ahead and shoot this all again. Uh, but you get the idea. So here's a little shot of it when I've got the inside painted. And I even have to fit all of the wood for the seat springs. Well, I would say after about four or five days of work, it's finally starting to come together. Well, it's a very exciting day. I finally have the metal work done on this job. This car was a bear. Being ripped off the frame of the forklift didn't do it any favors. But I've got everything back square, straight, nice, and I did the entire thing without even a port of power. I just used come along straps and some pieces of oak and pushed and pulled everything into place. I did use quite a bit of lead on it. I've got lead all around the, the uh, cowl section here where it was just so beat up and, and I couldn't get to the back side. I was sort of in trouble there and also on the doors I had to use some lead in that area. But everything else I got all pounded out and nice and straight. I've got the spare tire carrier in the back squared up, mounted, and that's all good. I've had gas in the gas tank now for about two weeks. No leaks there, that's good. And um, our hood is basically aligned. A couple little tweaks, it'll be real simple, and I can go ahead and finish the metal work on this. This is the only thing that just sort of dropped into place and was 90% there right off the bat. That was a nice surprise. So I've got everything else fitted up. I've checked my rear fenders. I've checked into the running boards, make sure everything was square and straight there. I got a couple little things to do in the wood. Otherwise, all the wood is in the car. Some guys like to build the wood frames and then put the metal around it. I like to go the opposite way around. I like to get my metal exactly what I, where I want it and then I make the wood fit inside of it. So I'm going at things a little bit different than the, than the guys that build the frame first. My screws are going in from a different direction than they do. Eh, there's a lot of roads between Chicago and New York and you pick your path. I like to do it with the metal straight first and then put the wood in. So all that's done. This thing will come apart tomorrow and go into primer and then paint will soon follow. I'm thinking maroon and black. I don't know. I like a vermilion pinstripe. Apple green doesn't do a whole lot for me. What do you think? Well, it's a really big day and a call for celebration. I put the jib on the forklift and I've got it strapped up here with a couple axle straps to some spreader bars. Really pretty simple setup. The only real risk is the doggone thing can uh, roll over sideways, so you got to make sure that that's okay. But it works really well, and I usually end up doing all this stuff by myself, so uh, just kind of watch it and away we go. What I'm doing right now is I'm making sure that the rubber pads are not stuck to the body. I really want those to be left with a frame, as I'll show you in a minute. I got pretty damn close to that 33 Cadillac behind me. We got a bunch of these carts around the shop and uh, as you can see, it's pretty short for the little Model A. These carts are normally for the classics, you know, the Auburns, Cords, and Packards, and Lincolns, and, and Cadillacs, and all that kind of stuff. But it works good. It works fine. I got that bar in the middle that moves around, so there's nothing to it can handle these things by myself with a forklift and a jib and a couple of straps. It, um, there's nothing to it. So here's the frame with the body pads left on the frame. And that's really important because um, with these wood frame cars, I never get to, to have one pad or two pads underneath each and every mount. It always ends up there's one here and three there you can see right here it goes three two one and I want to put this thing back together again exactly the way it is and the few cars I've taken apart that have been virgin never touched body never been off the frame guess what Ford had the same problem because they don't have one pad or two pads underneath every mount either So I just take a piece of tape, wrap up each pad, then I mark it with my Sharpie or whatever, and I make sure that that is, say, driver side number one. I always start at the front cowl and move my way backwards. And then when I've got that all done, 
I go back and guess what? Take pictures. I must have uh, 3,000 pictures of a restoration by the time I'm all said and done. But when I go back to put this thing back together again, I've got all my pads straightened out. I've got everything marked. I just go and put it together. And nine times out of 10, they fall right together, but almost never do they fall together perfectly. I'm always messing with a few pads here and there, but at least this keeps it to a minimum. And this was the surprising problem. Remember, we x the frame, we made sure that it was straight, and we were concentrating all on our, our two side rails and the cross members, and all was really good. Well, things kind of fell apart back here in the back. I measured the frame and got it on zero with my smart level. That's why I like these smart levels is because they give me a number. Now, I've got a Bosch one I also like. And anyways, I laid this down on here and I was a degree and a half up. I laid it on back here in the back and I was one degree up. So all I did is took the rosebud, heated the, the running board brace right about down in this area and then it was really easy to push these and get them in the right spot. And guess what? I had to do all four of them. Such is the way our project is going. It took me a full day to bolt all this stuff up and get it all looking right. Another thing I look for is this edge here. I want to make sure that the fender is straight all the way down here, straight down here, and when we get to the, the putting the body on the rear fenders, I've got to have a nice straight line all the way down these fenders. No in and outs. We want this to line up just exactly right with the zinc trim. And so this is just sticking out just a hair because I've got to put the zinc trim back on. I had to take it off so that I could get a true reading of the level here. And so um, we'll do that. Uh, we'll put this on as far as permanent a little bit later. Um, one little note about these running boards is that they're like 500 and some bucks. And I wish they would not install the zinc trim. We always have to pull it back off and notch the little corner around this round bead here like they did originally. And pulling them off, that was harder than putting them back on again. I don't know why they just don't leave them off. One kind of surprising thing that I ran into was this right here. My splash apron I know has got good shape. It's original and it was not really beat up in this area. It's my fender that was off. My body work that I did 20 years ago wasn't a quite 100%. I'm a little low where the running board meets the fender here, and I'm a little high right here. Well, the way I'm going to fix that is I'm going to stretch the lip on the high spot, and I'm going to shrink the lip on the low spot, and I'll bet you it comes right in. And then once that's done, all this stuff is fitted, blow it back apart, we'll get these blasted, we can start block sand in our front fenders while we're waiting for radiator and a few other things. You know, one thing I was really surprised at, I looked everywhere for a front fender brace. I could not find one that wasn't broken. That's why they changed the design of these. So I had to go in and remanufacture the whole bottom into that brace. It was a bit of a job. I don't bother putting all the bolts in at this point. I'm just fitting up the front fenders and the running boards and trying to get my brackets all nice and straight and doing that. So really, it's not a big deal to just vice grip this thing together and move as quickly as I can. You know, I think one thing that really separates the men from the boys is when these cars are straight, square, the bumpers are level, the headlight bar is right, this front pan fits the fenders exactly right. It really is nice to have a crisp, straight, clean car where every line is just right. Well, the decision point was new or used, and guess what? The roll on the bottom side of these splash aprons was beautiful. They used to be a V bottom, and one of the uh, powers that be in the Model A world told me that most every restorer that restores high point cars uses the new ones. They just round off that bottom. Guess what? It's already round. So what I did is I just took the old one and I marked it out exactly like the new one because they don't trim the edges quite right. So I thought, well, hell, this is a whole lot easier than working those originals. And they really are a nice reproduction. They fit up very well. We just got to go in here and trim all this stuff off 
cut the holes in it and um, make them look exactly like original. Well, after we clean up the edges, it looks pretty damn good. And if we can make these reproductions look exactly like the originals, why not? Splash shippers are a bitch to get absolutely straight. Yes, I am going to cheat with a really neat punch press, but you don't have to do this. You could uh, use a die grinder and grind out those half circles out of there, but it just was a whole lot easier with this machine. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm spoiled. Believe it or not, I got this machine for free. Yeah, they were going to throw it away. So I happened to be at the right spot at the right time and uh, picked this one up. I missed another one that has a bunch more sizes to it. But since then, I acquired another one, and I probably have about 100 different uh, shapes and sizes that I can punch out now. So coming up on next time, we've got to tackle this pan. And I'm going to dive deeper into the power hammer and how the hammer works and linear stretching dies. And also we're going to get more into this Polmax machine because we're going to make half of this pan new and we're going to fix the other half. And I'll show you why I made the decision to use the original one here versus making a new one.